when you see assassins and, and these lone nut uh, killers in the United States, like uh, Hol James Holmes, for example, in the shooting in, uh, in Aurora, or these theater shootings recently, or the Sandy Hook kids, or the Boston, uh, the Boston bombing kids, do you see them and say, they look in their, their eye, they look like sleeper assassins, they look like they've been drugged and, and trained and deployed the same way that you were? The short answer is yes. And in fact, I looked at the video of the Charleston shooter, and there's video of him walking into the police station within a few hours of the event. I mean, I think they stopped and they bought him a hamburger, right? So, uh, nice of them to do that. Yeah, that was so, weird, right? Charleston was the, the, church, the church shooting in Carolina where they, yeah, right? They, have, you ever, have you ever had a cop buy you some food because you were hungry? <laughs> uh, let alone, you know, for, 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 for a DUI, no, let no, alone no, for killing people. people? No. So anyway, he, 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 uh, he's walking into the police station. There's cameras everywhere. And you can see him walking towards the camera, and his eyes, his eyes are, I swear to God, they're blinking slowly like this, slowly blinking like that. And also his pupils are dilated, okay? Now, if you look on my crowdsource site, that's the first actual characteristic I have for how to recognize a sleeper assassin. Uh, they, uh, they have dilated pupils, they have droopy eyelids, and they have slow blinking. That's number C, slow blinking. Uh, very foul, bad breath, uh, and they have heavy legs, loss of strength in the legs, so it's a lot of effort just to stand and walk and run. Heavy head, they might find themselves bobbing in their head when they're sitting. Uh, loss of willpower, they'll do whatever they're told. You have no willpower, including, you, you, I think you mentioned and in some countries, if you, you get hit with scopalamine, they just blow it into your face and then say, let's go to your bank machine. And you withdraw all your money and they say, yeah, just give it to me. And they just, you just give it to them. You, you have no willpower. Uh, another thing is you have post-event amnesia. Scopalamine intoxication wipes out amnesia for uh, your memory for three to five days. Now, I have experience. I'm an actual scientist here because when they hit me last year with that scopalamine fog test, there was no trauma dissociation, just scopalamine. And that's the only time I had just scopalamine. Mm -hmm. And it took me between three and five days to recall the event. Right. Anyway, getting back to your, your question, James Holmes, 100%, 100% is an MK Ultra guy. And furthermore, he looks like an MK Ultra patsy, not an MK Ultra shooter. And the re reason I say that, okay, first of all, he has super dilated pupils in the video in the courtroom. He's got his head kind of bobbing a little bit. And he looks really confused. And he can't even say his name. He's so blasted on scopalamine, they have to say his name for him. Uh, and, I mean, it's quite obvious that this guy was an MK Ultra patsy. There was a second gas mask found in that theater. There was a report of another guy there. And the reason why, you know, you can't take a neurology student who's, you know, doing a PhD guy who's a nerd and turn him into a super soldier, you know, overnight. That's not going to work. So it's much better. They had to do something quick because his dad was about to testify before a big banking commission and to unearth all this corruption in the banking business. So they had to quickly do something. So they decided, okay, we'll make him a patsy. And that's what they did. They, you know, they, there was a mind controller working on him for a month or two. They, they got him high on scopalamine, really high. They, they cut his hair in a bowl shape. They gave him a red, red uh, dye and it made him look, you know, like kind of nuts. And uh, then they blamed him for the whole thing. Right. And he's innocent. Yeah. And you, can, you, can um, and, down, and, you can go down the line, I think, from there and just kind of use, use your, you, you, I would tell the, uh, the audience to use your intelligence when you look at these random lone nut cases and just, dis, you know, use your discernment and be like, how realistic yes. is that? How realistic are, obviously, yes, there are crazy people in the world, and yet to go up and pick up a weapon, first of all, arm yourself to the teeth like that, go out there and, and shoot and murder people for no reason whatsoever, Let's start to let's use discernment here as to what the motivation really might be from a government point of view, from a strategic mind you're, control point of view. You hit the nail on the head, Sean. That's exactly it. People need to think critically and think who benefits, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, one, one week after the Charleston shooting, Hillary Clinton said, this is the problem with free speech. Mm -hmm. And the, the implication of, what, of that statement is that this guy, this, this guy in the Charleston shooting, who we know was not a racist six months earlier because he has all these black friends on Facebook who say, hey, this guy is a nice guy, he's not a racist. All of a sudden, in the last two months, he becomes a racist. Right. Uh, and, and, I mean, it doesn't fit. 
And who and now this thing about uh, the the idea is what Hillary Clinton's statement meant was that he, this this is what happens when we have an open and free internet that's not censored is that the hate groups propagandize people to become terrorists. Everybody die. That's what he said. Everybody's going to die. That's what he said. Roseanne Solis was in the church when the gunman Devin Kelly blasted his way inside. He was going through the aisles all around with his hunt, with his. It wasn't a handgun; it was a pistol. Or a, uh, he was looking all around and shooting at everybody, just going through the rows, shooting at everybody. The guy was still shooting. He was shooting. I mean, I think he shot more than 300 shots. So then he uh, he it stopped for about I would say like five minutes. And then I guess he must have reloaded and started again. All these people screaming and bleeding and nobody nobody would get there to save us from the, you know, from the shooter. The bullets were coming right down. I could see it on the carpet. The bullets hitting, passing me like that, you know. And I could see it on the carpet. I said, if I don't move from here, I'm going to die. As the FBI continues to comb the church property, investigators say the mass shooting stemmed from a domestic incident. Hello, everyone. I'm Yuki Washington. I'm Jessica Dean. Here's what else we now know from Sutherland Springs. 26 people are dead, 20 others injured. The shooter, Devin Patrick Kelly, threatened his ex-mother-in-law in a text message on the day of that shooting, and he shot and killed his ex-wife's grandmother in that rampage. FBI agents used metal detectors to comb through the murder scene outside the First Baptist Church of Sutherland Springs, Texas. Authorities say 26-year-old Devin Kelly opened fire during services Sunday, killing more than two dozen people. There are a lot of questions about how this mass murderer continued to slip through the system time and time again. how this mass murderer continued to slip through the system time and time again. He was repeatedly under investigation from everything from sex assaults to sneaking weapons onto a military base. There were major failures. There were major failures that allowed this violent man to buy weapons that he ultimately used at least one of them to kill half of a congregation. We are now learning from a police report that the gunman had escaped a mental facility in 2012 after trying to smuggle weapons onto an Air Force base and making death threats against his military superiors. Documents show he pleaded guilty to striking, choking, kicking, and pulling the hair of his then wife on two separate occasions. Yet none of this was reported as required by federal law to the FBI, which would have prohibited Kelly from buying weapons, including the weapon that authorities say he used to kill more than two dozen people at First Baptist Church in Sutherland Springs. A source told News 8 that the military is notorious for not reporting criminal history to the FBI. In addition to all of that, Kelly was also under investigation by the Camel County Sheriff's Office in June 2013 for reported sexual assault, but the case was stalled and nothing more was done. We're re still researching it. We, we think that it was partly because maybe the suspect had uh, moved to Colorado. So again, he slipped through the system. Welcome to Bogota, Colombia. We're here chasing after the most dangerous drug in the world. Burundanga. Burundanga is the source of scopolamine, which is basically like the worst roofie you can ever imagine times a million. You're at the whim of suggestions like, hey, take me to your ATM. Hey, come with me to the hotel room while you're completely conscious and articulate.
Apparently there's a lot of different parts of the plant that are a bit dangerous, possibly a bit fun, depending on what you're into. So we're gonna be looking for the tree, talking to people who've had experience with it, and seeing if we can find some of the actual drug ourselves. So the deal with Burundanga is that it pretty much eliminates your free will. So you're awake and you're articulate and to anyone else watching you, it seems like you're perfectly fine, but you've completely lost control of your own actions. So you're at the whim of suggestions and that's how people take advantage of you. I've heard a bunch of different stories really running the gamut. Some of them sound like kind of campfire horror stories you're told when you're growing up, stuff like waking up in a bathtub with an organ cut out and a sign saying you have five hours to get to the hospital. Uh, we've of course also heard that it's used as a date rape drug. Um, we heard one particularly chilling story where a guy was taken back to his apartment, woke up the next morning in the empty apartment, completely confused as to what happened, went down and said to his doorman, you know, why is my apartment empty? What happened? And the doorman said, well, you brought it out with two of your friends last night, all your stuff, you loaded it into a van. And the guy was like, why in the hell would you let me do that? And he was like, because you told me to. So that, that's kind of the stuff we're dealing with here. Uh, complete elimination of free will um, while still acting, which is pretty much the scariest shit I can imagine. Escopola es una droga como ninguna, no tienes, no tienes sin igual, ¿sí me entiendes? O sea, tú coges con un sopido así, por ejemplo, tú estás, tú estás aquí caminando y de repente... Pff, o sea, tú vas, vas de espalda o vamos a una pinta caminando acá y yo me le paso por un lado aquí. Le hago así nomás con eso, nomás con ese destello. El man ya queda burundangueado. Tú esperas cuando ya tú ves el efecto es que el man empieza como a, como a medio tal, entonces ya tú, lo, ya tú eres dueño total del man. Entonces tú lo coges, lo encanas y tú te lo llevas para donde tú quieras, parece un niño. Y tú te llevas, lo, llévame a tu casa, eh, saca tu chequera, dame tus cuentas de ahorros, tu número de ta, 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 tu tarjeta y tal. Y así, si te pasas de dosis, corre peligro de, de que la persona se muera. Colombia es basically fucked. They have the longest running guerrilla war in all of Latin America. They've essentially been at civil war for 60 years, and really, if you think about it, they've never not been at war since they gained their own independence. Other fun facts about Colombia, definitely not from the Board of Tourism, include the fact that one in every three kidnappings in the world happen right here in Colombia. And as we all know, it's the cocaine capital of the universe. Un gramo de escopola es como un gramo de perico, la misma, la misma maricada porque tiene la misma densidad en peso y en presentación, si ¿sí me entiendes cómo es, pero tú con un grabo puedes matar hasta 10, 15 personas, matar. Por eso es tan extremadamente delicado y no se consigue. Y, y la información, por ejemplo, que yo sí sé dónde se consigue, porque yo sí sé, hijo de puta, si ¿sí me entiendes dónde se consigue todo. Now, the borrachero tree, which, by the way, roughly translates to drunken binge tree, is indigenous to the northern Andean region. That includes Colombia and Ecuador, Venezuela. But the scopolamine is really only used by the criminal element here in Colombia. Que por aquí hay, por aquí tiene que haber un gallo mío si de pronto pillamos una. ¿No dice que ahí al lado de César hay una? Sí, dice al lado de César hay un árbol. Ahí, aquí dice silvestre. So despite the insane homicide rates, the kidnapping, the narco trafficking, the civil unrest, and everything else going on in here in Colombia, we can't seem to find a Colombian who's more scared of anything than falling asleep under the borrachero tree. So far, 
Uh, I'm really into Colombia. I showed up, uh, beautiful women ordered me dinner, and it's fantastic. And they ordered a bottle of whiskey to the table. I might not go back. There is a song with it. I don't know why, but no, no, no. It's been it's been around for a long time. So it's not it's not something that that is popularly done down here. Then no, that, anybody does that. No, really, no. not at all. No, no, we have cocaine. <laughs> we have cocaine, we have grass, we have wheat. <laughs> what, what, Burundanga, why? Yeah. Everybody is aware. Like, yeah. Yeah. Todo el mundo tiene cuidado. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you, can, you cannot control it at all. You don't need it in a cup or no, with no, a no, drink just to smell it. To smell it, to Oof. smell it, yeah, it's very strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, if the really robbers they, they use it for that is because they know that you are not you cannot react or a paper like I heard this guy that was th this old lady came to him oh I don't know where this address is and this paper and he just and got yeah, it like this close and, like this. and he's on it yeah mm -hmm. so this guy and uh, this guy was like hospital. really crazy he was like walking on the in the oh. hospital like really lost perfect drug like to do you, that you, you know because the person doesn't yeah. like like pass yeah. out they're still conscious yeah and they do everything that they tell you to do yeah do you know do you know people that have been given burundanga do you have a cousin of a friend or a cousin with it no i have an uncle mm. an uncle yeah you told oh, no? mm. yeah, it's not there? a happy story you know no, I imagine. <laughs> but um he he was a taxi cab driver mm -hmm. and and they use this thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know the whole story exactly, but um, but it was his last trip. He died. He died? Mm -hmm. Se llama Floripondio. Su nombre científico es Datura. Mm -hmm. De ahí se saca la escopolamina, pero también se le dice borrachero y se le dice la planta del diablo aquí en Colombia. We're here at the Botanical Gardens on the outskirts of Bogota. We're gonna go see if we can figure out what this plant actually looks like. Those right there are the flowers that we've heard a lot about. You can kind of put those in a tea and you'll hallucinate. You can also take the root down there, put that in a tea and again, you'll hallucinate. And then there's the cacao, which kind of looks like a, the, the mini coconut of sorts that has the seeds inside. Me comí pepino y medio. Duré 17 días viajando con otro parcero. Mi parcero se quedó en el viaje. El man hoy en día anda así en la calle. Yo no sé en qué viaje, cuál, en qué viaje pasar y quedaría el man. Un choque, hijo de puta, tú te quedas en el viaje. El man. Pero el man anda por la calle así. El man mira detrás de la mano. El man no anda así. El man anda. Quién sabe en qué viaje se quedaría el marica, güey. Pero loquísimo. Si analiza la acción, el man como una cortina. Actually, just crack the thing right there and then. This is where the seeds are. I mean, that's where everything comes from, right? That's what they use to actually make the scopolamine. You're in business. The most dangerous drug in Colombia and arguably the world. El polvo lo sacan del cacao sabanero, que es el fruto. Pero entonces el polvo tiene un proceso químico, ¿sí me entiendes cómo es? O sea, el polvo, no, o sea, para pulverizarlo, convertirlo en blanco, envolverlo en una pastilla o, o algo así, se necesita un químico. Se necesita un químico. Es como, por ejemplo, usar éter para, bajar, para rebajar el perico, para, etc. Entonces eso, eso ya es completamente químico. The coca, at the end of the day, I mean, with its obvious pitfalls and dangers, is recreational. Yeah. Whereas there's nothing at all recreational about what can be made with this. It's a distinctly criminal element. Está uno totalmente como un zombie sirviendo a una gente que te da unas órdenes. Lo peor de esta experiencia es haber sido una víctima por haber querido ser buena gente y querer ayudar. Fui involucrada en 
en toda esta violencia en la que vives. La ironía de suerte es que es hermoso, es una muy buena planta, se siente muy bien, estoy disfrutando esto ahora mismo. Seems quite Colombian, all in all. Very beautiful and very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty much the symbol of Colombia, isn't it? If you didn't know what you were looking for, you'd walk right by and go, that's a pretty flower, maybe I'll pick it and give it to my mom. But that would be a real bad idea. It's <laughs> como que pierdes toda tu voluntad, lo que, no sé, que no puedes reaccionar. Que no hay la capacidad de decir, oiga, hay algo muy malo en todo esto. Puedes conseguir un gramo de, de escopola. Oscila entre 40, 50 lucas más o menos, ¿no? pero con un gramo de escopola, a mí no es un viaje de cuerpo. Ese es un bar, ese es el bar de mi parcero. Ahí detrás de esa camioneta, esa camioneta tiene más. Si pilla, Bien. detrás de la camioneta puedes parar. Bueno, mi hermano. ¿Sisas? Ahí nos vemos. Bueno. No me demoro, no me demoro. Es arriba, mi Esa vaina es arriba. No me demoro, cari loco. Fresco, fresco. <risa> Cisas, ¿qué más? Todo bien, Dan. Y solamente tiene dos funciones. Tomasear, estudiar o asesinar. Cisas, ah, no, son tres. Son tres. Cisas, Simón, a lo bien, Dan. Son tres funciones letales, marica. ¿Sí o no? Sí, amor, a cochea. Es el transmutador de los venenos, marica. ¿Y qué queda, cabrón? Aprendí dando vueltas. En ese trayecto de ir a coger el bus, eh, un hombre me paró y me dijo que si conocía una dirección. Y pues él me dijo que si conocía esa dirección, me mostró el papel. Yo, por la ubicación, estaba muy cerca. El caso es que yo terminé llevándolo al señor hasta, hasta donde él quería. Él, nos tomamos un, un jugo, que yo creo que ahí es donde me dieron la escopolamina, a través del, de, de la bebida. So now we're here at the National University of Columbia. We're going to go talk to Dr. Miriam Gutierrez, who heads up the toxicology department here and apparently is an expert on scopolamine. I'm going to try and chat with her a bit about what actually happens when someone's exposed to the drug and try and figure out what this whole zombie thing really means. Si vamos a verlo desde el punto de vista médico, eso sería la sustancia perfecta para los hechos delictivos, porque la víctima no va a recordar nada. Por lo tanto, no denuncia porque cuando ellos tratan de recordar la persona que se la dio, no, no fija la memoria. Y cuando ya se despertaba y se daba cuenta que había sido robado, él no se acordaba de que él mismo había colaborado. Entonces, eso es, esa era la propiedad que se piensa, eh, eh, se explota de sustancias como estas que tienen la posibilidad de, entre comillas, hipnotizar al paciente. Me llevaron hasta la casa, yo vivía ahí súper cerca, y saqué un poco de cosas, esculqué toda la casa. Yo era feliz, esculcando, buscando. Yo sabía que mi novio, con el que yo estaba viviendo, había tenido unos ahorros. Los boté todo, volví todo una nada y busqué el sobre y lo encontré. Desafortunadamente lo encontré. Estaba lleno de dólares, de euros, en unos ahorros que eran de mi novio de hace mucho tiempo. Él era fotógrafo, entonces te di también unas cámaras. O sea, yo llegué y cogí todo lo que yo pude y encontré mi camino y yo estaba feliz de buscar y quería buscar más, de hecho. Cuando me di cuenta, no, yo me puse a llorar y me fui inmediatamente a la estación de policía, que uh -huh. quedaba como unas cuatro cuadras. Yo gritaba desesperada, me entró un momento de desesperación horrible. Fui muy afortunada en haber tenido una dosis muy pequeña de que solamente me fueran hasta el apartamento y me sacaran el dinero que tenía. Pues para mí muy doloroso haber perdido plata, pero en últimas yo digo ahora que pues estuve muy de buenas. Si hubieran sido personas aún más malas todavía, tal vez hubiera terminado, podido ser violada en el apartamento o cualquier cosa. ¿Mm? 60 mil, la liguita. Oh, okay. 
¿Para las copolas? No, 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 pero... Por el cruce, por la vuelta y todo eso, hermano. Saquear bolsillo, sí, es ahora. Por eso no lo hago. Nada, mire, va a mostrar. No, pero no, 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 pero pero no, no importa. No, al momento, no, sí quiero mostrar, no se preocupen. No, sí, 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 Crean en mí. No, todo bien, nada. Todo bien. La manipulación es efectiva. A menos que sea una nota a otro nivel. No se preocupen. No se preocupen. Uy, puta, eso es una cantidad. No, no, ya, 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 ya. Nada, no pasa nada. Es por ti, pues bueno, cada uno va a dar un toque. Ya, 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 ya. Mira, así como está, no tiene necesidad de nada más. Cinta, pero cinta negra. Vale. ¿Lo sintió? Sí, mi repeso, ¿no? ¿Lo sintió? ¿Sintió el hedor? Sentí así. ¿Sí o no? Tal, Salió ¿no? fantasma. Es que problema. Arranca, <risa> ventile, ventile el carro antes de que vemos todos viajar. <risa> Hablo con el marido y más se me paniquea, se me traumatiza. <risa> Para que se tome una copa, por lo menos. Muy amables. Momento, Mucho momento. cuidado. Sí. Mucho cuidado, eso es como el Antrax. Sí, sí, sí. Eso es peor que el Antrax, que se con los es peor que el Antrax. Sí. Scopolamine is by no means a modern revelation here in Colombia. The indigenous people in this area have had a whole bunch of uses for the drug. For example, when a chieftain died, all his assorted females, wives, mistresses, what have you, they had to go as well. Now that could be a bit of a dicey process, but what better way to shore things up than to slip them some scopolamine and suggest they walk into a grave? When they did, they were buried alive. In modern times, there's a whole litany of fucked up people who've been using scopolamine for their benefit. For example, in the 1930s and 40s, Joseph Mengels had the drug imported from Colombia to Germany to use in some of his interrogations. More recently, the CIA tried to use the drug in the 60s during the Cold War as sort of a truth serum. The problem with all of this is that in addition to a whole lot of truth, there's a good bit of hallucination involved. In the cab right now heading over to the southern part of the city. We're going to meet with some officials at the Bogota City Police Department. Uh, what we're hoping to figure out is a little bit more about how the Burundanga gangs work. Sí, el modus operandi más común es cuando las personas, más que todo del género masculino, va a los sitios, va a las discotecas va a los sitios de prostitución, empiezan a tomar bebidas, le echan la escopolamina en el licor y después los sacan, los llevan. Eh, muchas veces los llevan en el mismo vehículo de ellos, hacen un recorrido por los diferentes cajeros automáticos en los bancos, le sacan todo el dinero y en otras oportunidades los secuestran. ¿no? Eh, son bandas organizadas, ¿no? utilizan las mujeres. Eh, en muchas oportunidades utilizan mujeres muy bonitas, y los hombres se dejan convencer por la belleza de estas mujeres y caen en sus encantos, como se dice. So it seems like a lot of the worst scopolamine stories that we've heard start and end at places just like this. And the next thing we're able to get from someone is, I woke up on a park bench day and a half later, without my clothes on, without any money, whatever it is. This drug has always been kind of inextricably linked to sex in some way or another. From its earliest uses to eliminate the lingering mistresses of fallen chieftains, to its eventual use uh, in easing the pain of childbirth, to the stories we're hearing on the streets today uh, about prostitutes giving it to unsuspecting Johns, or about men turning women into prostitutes by suggesting they go out and earn some cash. It always seems to come back to sex in one way or another, and it always seems to start at places like this.
se acercaron dos morenas, muy agradables por cierto, eh, a la mesa del lado. Eso eran más o menos las 10, 11 de la noche. Empezamos a tomar, estábamos bailando, pues todo dentro de lo normal, muy sanamente. Nos terminamos esa, 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 esa de ron, pedimos nuevamente otra, pues ya estábamos como acalorados de los tragos. Llegó cierto momento que mi compañero dijo, no, 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 Iván, yo me voy, yo me voy. Pero pues yo sí no me quise ir, yo estaba como muy, muy sabrosa la cosa, muy, muy chévere y, y decidí quedarme otro rato. Pues yo creo que ese fue el error porque al quedarme solo, ellas aprovecharon ese momento de pronto de, de hacerme algo. Uno de mis errores, aparte de quedarme solo, fue irme al baño y dejar la mesa sola. Obviamente cuando llegué, algo le habían echado al trago. Eh, continuamos tomando, ese lapso de tiempo de que se empiezan a olvidar las cosas, como ya sentirme mareado, sumo yo que ya había, empezaba a hacer efecto lo que le habían echado al trago. Recuerdo también que estábamos bailando y tomando, eso ya yo pienso que eran por ahí tipo 2 de la mañana. ¿Qué pasó después? No sé qué pasó, no puedo dar razón, no puedo decir hice, no hice, nada. Al día siguiente, tipo 8 de la mañana, pss, aparecí en Castilla, en lugar de Castilla, en un parque, tirado, eh, golpeado. El cómo me golpearon o qué pasaría, tampoco recuerdo. Cuando necesitamos plata y vemos que la gente, que por ejemplo llega un man y tiene la plata de una, la escupo la mina, lo sentamos al lado de uno, empezamos allá a tocarlo, o con la mano la pasamos por la nariz, el man queda tonto, queda bobo. Mi nombre es Chica María Mosquera Córdoba, 21 años. Quieren hacer eso, mandan a la mujer que compre un cigarrillo, o que vaya al baño, o que vaya a algo y le hacen la vuelta a uno en el trago, así uno con los manes. Ay, papi, yo quiero un cigarrillo y el man, ah, sí, gente te lo busco. Uno aprovecha un poquito. Me robaron los papeles, sacaron la plata del cajero. Yo tenía unas tarjetas de crédito recién, lo mismo hicieron los avances. Primero perdí 6 millones de pesos, más o menos. Yo estuve en los bancos preguntando y me mostraron videos donde yo retiraba la plata. Pero no entraba con nadie. Pero si había fuera de los cajeros dos personas ahí esperándome. Asumo que eran las mismas señoritas con que yo estaba. Son muy astutas, muy sagaces, entonces ellas se hacían en la parte posterior del, del cajero donde ellas no se dejaban ver el rostro. Estaban prácticamente de espaldas. La capacidad que tienen las mujeres de encantar, ¿sí? porque es la belleza la que lo mata a uno en pocas palabras. Pues como se presta para uno como mujer robar a los manes, también los manes la usan como para violarnos a nosotras. Todo eso que trata la escopa, la mina como para hacerle daño a la gente. Mata a una persona en 20 minutos, en 5 minutos y uno no se da de cuenta. Sí, ahí. Pero no quiero que se le... no, verlo. Mira. ¡Mira, marica! ¡Qué no es! Mira. Y el fruto es este, mira. Está lleno, ¿sí lo ves? Sí. Espectacular. Con esto ya tienes un viaje para 10 para personas. Los niños del jardín infantil que aquí a la vuelta, marica. Ya, bienvenidos a Locombia. Ya, sexos, drogas, rock and roll. Satanás. Satanás. Yo, yo por lo menos me voy a meter una. He estado en el médico en varias ocasiones por eso. ¿Por qué? Porque tengo secuelas de que a mí se me olvida las cosas. ¿Mm? Eh, yo tengo ese problema. Yo hoy por lo menos estoy hablando con usted, pero mañana no me acuerdo de todo lo que hablemos. ¿Mm? Me pasa mucho que yo peleo también, dormido. Peleo, peleo. Mis sueños son, son pesadillas, yo diría. Lo difícil, lo difícil del tema es uno no saber qué ha pasado. ¿Sí? Eso es lo difícil. El primer día que yo la manejé, 
fue que me tocó a irme a un barrio de Medellín. Allá le toqué la puerta a una cuchita, me acuerdo tanto. Ella me abrió una ventanita. Yo le digo, doña, lo que pasa es que venimos pidiendo comida para desplazados y pito y lo otro, si me entiende. Y la cuchita, sí, yo por aquí tengo un poco de, de comida de remesa, se la quieren llevar. Entonces la cuchita abre la, la ventanita. Si me entiende, que apenas abrió la ventana, la cucha, no sé qué me pasó a mí en esos momentos que yo de una saco así, el papel y solo hago así a la cucha, y la cuchita de una quedó así. La cuchita se tiene un infarto que una cayó al piso. Yo me asusté y todo. Pero así mismo por encima de ella, como ella está ahí tirada y no pasa por encima con el televisor, con todo. Esa era la primera vez que, no, que yo se las copo la mina con los costeños. De ahí para allá me acostumbré a usarla así con los clientes que yo entraba a pieza o me ponía, me ponía a tomar con ellos. Porque yo se los doy en trago, se los echo así, hablando, o llego yo y me lo pongo aquí. Y yo me les pego así y ellos nomás con pedacito de algodón y se lo mete. No que va hasta adentro, ¿no? Y uno lo pone aquí y uno se le acerca a la persona y la persona suelve. ¿Se ¿Sí entiende? En vez de uno solver, ellos son los que observan y uno ya es uno yo que se lava y se saca ese algodón normal. Eso, papito, para todo en este mundo hay práctica. Para toda y práctica. Yo se las echaba, lo robaba y salía campante. Cosas de juventud, ¿no? Que a la calle, ¿no? Porque si yo me pusiera en un papelito, ay, anota uno por uno a los que yo le he hecho. Yo me pongo a pensar que yo desde los 15 años que empecé a hacer esas maldades, hasta ahora que tengo 21 años, que fue que acabé de hacerlo. Imagínese usted cuántas personas que uno se mete en la mente, que uno no piensa sino hacerle daño a los demás porque uno ya lo daña por dentro, uno lleva esa, es así como, ay, la vida mía ya no importa, voy a, voy a hacer y voy a deshacer. Eso es lo que yo pensaba en mi juventud y, y yo sé que todavía estoy joven, pero yo nunca me imaginé llegar a esa vida, ¿sabes? Nunca me imaginé, nunca. Y yo todavía no me lo creo que yo haya hecho todas esas maldades y estoy acá bien relajada. Pero tan, muchas de esas maldades ya las he pagado con sangre, con llanto, con muchas cosas. So, so far we've heard a lot of stories about Burundanga, but we'd like to get a little bit closer. So we've asked some of our Colombian friends to put us in touch with someone who has an experience with Burundanga. ¿Qué problema? con el asco por la mina, es que tú sales bien. O sea, tú sales, hey, ven, vámonos, sí, vámonos, está, está, caminas y vas, y, y ahora qué, y, y todo el mundo te ve así tranquilo, ¿no? No es, cha. Claro. Eh, no, el señor salió aquí, lo sacaron así, no, no, la asco por la mina es, te atrapa la conciencia, te atrapa a ti, es una cosa tenaz. Tú, normal. Como una hipnosis química. Sí, desde luego, desde luego, es como, ¿sabe cómo le dicen en, en, en las calles, en el, en, los, en el bajo fondo? Lo llaman el soplo del diablo, porque te roba el alma. Yo vivía con este amigo, compartíamos un enorme apartamento y entonces el tipo se casó, me llamó él para celebrar el matrimonio y irnos de farra y de rumba, que era el quebracanto donde nosotros siempre íbamos un sitio muy famoso aquí en Bogotá, pero de ahí salimos a un amanecedero. La historia se divide en dos, el momento en que estábamos en ese sitio, que mi amigo llamó a las peladas, que estábamos tomando, y cuando yo me desperté, que me desperté en, 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 un, en un parque tirado en una banca. Cuando yo volví a la casa, que me dijeron que había ido con una gente que la, la portera me dijo, no, usted entró con una gente y, y ustedes sacaron los equipos, pero como lo vio como normal. Y ninguno estábamos ni borrachos ni nada, o sea, normal. Y la vuelta fue que nos llevaron a mi apartamento, yo entré a mi apartamento con las viejas, con el tipo, con Carlos, eh, les entregué lo que se llevaron, o sea, lo que eran cámaras, de video, eh, todo, ¿me entendés? 
el billete, la cuenta, fui y desocupé lo que tenía, toda la historia. Yo amanecí en una parte y que yo no me acordaba de nada y que Carlos no aparecía, entonces nos pusimos a buscarlo y lo encontramos en medicina legal como en N. Y había muerto de sobredosis de escopolamina. Yo pienso que la muerte de él fue porque él aguantó mucho más. O sea, a él le tuvieron que estar permanentemente dando hasta que se les quedó. Y él sí lo tiraron en una calle. ¿Sabes cómo, cómo fue que te lo dieron a ti? O sea, fue una copa, fue... Te lo... I don't know, man. No hay idea. Trago, pum. No, ni idea. Ni idea, ni idea. El problema es la muerte. El problema es qué tanto te dan, qué tanto te aguanta el cliente. Pienso que era también su capacidad de... Puf, que podía absorber mucho y llegó el momento en que lo... lo infartó. Por eso, por eso yo le hice la vuelta a la gente. Y el hecho de que yo vine a mi apartamento, estuve con esta gente, puta, ¿qué me hicieron? ¿Qué, qué pudieron haberme hecho que yo no me acuerdo? ¿no? Eso deja raya, raya, raya. Y ellos se equivocaron. Lo que no sabían ellos es que yo era muy conocido en el Santa Fe. Yeah. Yo fui un tipo de pandilla, uh -huh. o sea, fui realmente duro, uh -huh. malo, malo, malo. Entonces yo estuve reconstruyendo toda la vuelta y, y entonces me averiguaron todo, porque yo soy muy conocido en la vuelta. No, que usted estaba con tales peladas y tales y tales y que este man es el que trabaja con ellas y tin, 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 tin. Ah, era un chulo y dos putas que vivían de esa vaina con una banda dedicada a la, a la vuelta del reducidor de carros. Y entonces, claro, tocó a los pisos también. Y yo les hice la vuelta. Contraté a la gente para hacerle el trabajo a los que me lo habían hecho. A ellos les fue muy mal. Esas peladas las terminaron violando feísimo y las matonearon en un hotel horrible. Y al man le dieron duro. A las manos los mandé a matar, a los tres. Por hijo de putas. ¿Por qué? Porque entre otras cosas, yo venía de salir de ese mundo duro. Y, o sea, si yo no hacía algo, o sea, yo tenía que obrar. Cuando uno en ese mundo de, saben que, que te han hecho una vuelta así y que tú te quedas sano, pues ya te pierden el respeto. Hacer la reconstrucción con los duros. Are we done with it? I'm fucking over it, dude. After all this. Into the sewers? Anywhere but here. I feel like that shit, like if, when I first got here, I was like super interested in it and it was like this novelty thing and I've heard enough stories, man, that I'm just not fucking into that. It's not funny at all.
investigation by the Kamel County Sheriff's Office in June 2013 for reported sexual assault, but the case was stalled and nothing more was done. We're re still researching it. We, we think that it was partly because maybe the suspect had uh, moved to Colorado. So again, he slipped through the system. Welcome to Bogota, Colombia. We're here chasing after the most dangerous drug in the world, Burundanga. Burundanga is the source of scopolamine, which is basically like the worst roofie you can ever imagine times a million. You're at the whim of suggestions like, hey, take me to your ATM. Hey, come with me to the hotel room while you're completely conscious and articulate. Apparently there's a lot of different parts of the plant that are a bit dangerous, possibly a bit fun, depending on what you're into. So we're going to be looking for the tree, talking to people who've had experience with it, and seeing if we can find some of the actual drug ourselves. So the deal with Burundanga is that it pretty much eliminates your free will. So you're awake and you're articulate and to anyone else watching you, it seems like you're perfectly fine, but you've completely lost control of your own actions. So you're at the whim of suggestions and that's how people take advantage of you. I've heard a bunch of different stories really running the gamut. Some of them sound like kind of campfire horror stories you're told when you're growing up, stuff like waking up in a bathtub with an organ cut out and a sign saying you have five hours. To Kelly threatened his ex-mother-in-law in a text message on the day of that shooting, and he shot and killed his ex-wife's grandmother in that rampage. FBI agents use metal detectors to comb through the murder scene outside the First Baptist Church of Sutherland Springs, Texas. Authorities say 26-year-old Devin Kelly opened fire during services Sunday, killing more than two dozen people. There are a lot of questions about how this mass murderer continued to slip through the system time and time again. about how this mass murderer continued to slip through the system time and time again. He was repeatedly under investigation from everything from sex assaults to sneaking weapons onto a military base. There were major failures. There were major failures that allowed this violent man to buy weapons that he ultimately used at least one of them to kill half of a congregation. We are now learning from a police report that the gunman had escaped a mental facility in 2012 after trying to smuggle weapons onto an Air Force base and making death threats against his military superiors. Documents show he pleaded guilty to striking, choking, kicking, and pulling the hair of his then wife on two separate occasions. Yet none of this was reported as required by federal law to the FBI, which would have prohibited Kelly from buying weapons, including the weapon that authorities say he used to kill more than two dozen people at First Baptist Church in Sutherland Springs. A source told News 8 that the military is notorious for not reporting criminal history to the FBI. In addition to all of that, Kelly was also under investigation. When you see assassins and, and these lone nut uh, killers in the United States, like uh, Hol James Holmes, for example, in the shooting in, uh, in Aurora, or these theater shootings recently, or the Sandy Hook kids, or the Boston, uh, the Boston bombing kids, do you see them and say, they look in the, their eye, they look like sleeper assassins, they look like they've been drugged and, and trained and deployed the same way that you were? The short answer is yes. 
And in fact, I looked at the video of the Charleston shooter, and there's video of him walking into the police station within a few hours of the event. I mean, I think they stopped and they bought him a hamburger, right? So uh, nice of them to do that. Yeah, that was so, weird, right? Charleston was the, the church, the church shooting in Carolina, where they, yeah, right. They, have you ever, have you ever had a cop buy you some food because you were hungry? <laughs> Uh, let alone, you know, for, 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 for a DUI, let alone for killing people. No. So anyway, he, 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 uh, he's walking to the police station. There's cameras everywhere. And you can see him walking towards the camera. And his eyes, his eyes are, I swear to God, they're blinking slowly like this. Slowly blinking like that. And also his pupils are dilated. Okay. Now, if you look on my crowdsource site, that's the first actual characteristic I have for how to recognize a sleeper assassin. Uh, they, uh, they have dilated pupils, they have droopy eyelids, and they have slow blinking. That's number C, slow blinking. Uh, very foul, bad breath, uh, and they have heavy legs, loss of strength in their legs, so it's a lot of effort just to stand and walk and run. Heavy head, they might find themselves bobbing in their head when they're sitting. Uh, loss of willpower, they'll do whatever they're told. You have no willpower. Including, you, you, I think you mentioned and in some countries, if you, you get hit with scopolamine, they just blow it into your face and then say, let's go to your bank machine. And you withdraw all your money and they say, yeah, just give it to me. And they just, you just give it to them. You, you have no willpower. Uh, another thing is you have post-event amnesia. Scopolamine intoxication wipes out amnesia for uh, your memory for three to five days. Now, I have experience. I'm an actual scientist here. Because when they hit me last year with that scopolamine fog test, there was no trauma dissociation, just scopolamine. And that's the only time I had just scopolamine. Mm -hmm. And it took me between three and five days to recall the event. Right. Anyway, getting back to your, your question, James Holmes, 100%, 100% is an MKUltra guy. And furthermore, he looks like an MKUltra patsy, not an MKUltra shooter. And the re reason I say that, okay, first of all, he has super dilated pupils in the video in the courtroom. He's got his head kind of bobbing a little bit, and he looks really confused, and he can't even say his name. He's so blasted on scopolamine, they have to say his name for him. Uh, and, I mean, it's quite obvious that this guy was an MK Ultra patsy. There was a second gas mask found in that theater. There was a report of another guy there. And the reason why, you know, you can't take a neurology student who's, you know, doing a PhD guy who's a nerd and turn him into a super soldier, you know, overnight. That's not going to work. So it's much better. They had to do something quick because his dad was about to testify before a big banking commission and to unearth all this corruption in the banking business. So they had to quickly do something. So they decided, okay, we'll make him a patsy. And that's what they did. They, you know, they, there was a mind controller working on him for a month or two. They, they got him high on scopolamine, really high. They, they cut his hair in a bowl shape. They gave him a red, red uh, dye and it made him look, you know, like kind of nuts. And uh, then they blamed him for the whole thing. Right. And he's innocent. Yeah. And you can, you can go, and, down, and, you can go, go down the line, I think, from there and just kind of use, use your, you, you, I would tell the, the audience to use your intelligence when you look at these random lone nut cases and just dis, you know, use your discernment and be like, how realistic yes. is that? How realistic are, obviously, yes, there are crazy people in the world and yet to go up and pick up a weapon, first of all, arm yourself to the teeth like that, go out there and, and shoot and murder people for no reason whatsoever. Let's start to dis use discernment here as to what the motivation really might be from a government point of view, from a strategic mind yeah, control point yeah. of view. You hit the nail on the head, John. That's exactly it. People need to think critically and think who benefits, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, one, one week after the Charleston shooting, Hillary Clinton said, this is the problem with free speech. Mm -hmm. And the, Im the implication of, what, of that statement is that this guy, this, this guy in the Charleston shooting, who we know was not a racist six months earlier because he has all these black friends on Facebook who say, hey, this guy is a nice guy. He's not a racist. All of a sudden, in the last two months, he becomes a racist. Right. Uh, and, and, I mean, it doesn't fit. And, who, and now this thing about, uh, the, the idea is, what Hillary Clinton's statement meant was that he, this, this is what happens when we have an open and free internet that's not censored, is that the hate groups propagandize people to become terrorists. Everybody die, that's what he said. Everybody's going to die, that's what he said. 
Roseanne Solis was in the church when the gunman, Devin Kelly, blasted his way inside. He was going through the aisles all around with his hunt, with his, it wasn't a handgun, it was a pistol or a, uh, he was looking all around and shooting at everybody, just going through the rows, shooting at everybody. The guy was still shooting. He was shooting, I mean, I think he shot more than 300 shots. So then he, uh, he, it stopped for about, I would say like five minutes. And then I guess he must have reloaded and started again. All these people screaming and bleeding and nobody, nobody would get there to save us from, the, you know, from the shooter. The bullets were coming right down. I could see it on the carpet. The bullets hitting, passing me like that, you know, and I could see it on the carpet. I said, if I don't move from here, I'm going to die. As the FBI continues to comb the church property, investigators say the mass shooting stemmed from a domestic incident. Hello, everyone. I'm Yuki Washington. I'm Jessica Dean. Here's what else we now know from Sutherland Springs. 26 people are dead, 20 others injured. The shooter, Devin Patrick K.